you today. How is everyone? So, um, Infistry, thank you so much for the host. Hi, Infistry and Nikki and, and Minion Mama. Welcome to uh, block number six. After today, we are at the halfway point. We have done six blocks and we have six more to go. And then we just have the sashing and assembly to go. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. So, the, uh, no, he got a haircut about a week and a half ago. The not so floopy puppy. Yep. He got, I, I gave him a haircut last Saturday. Uh, so, today's block is the puzzle tetrads block. Uh, this one looks complicated. It has a lot of pieces. It has the most number of colors in any of the blocks. But it's actually pretty easy. It's actually pretty darn easy to put together. Um, just It's same as most of the blocks. It's a standard block. It's not one of the tough ones. It is, it's just very colorful. Yes, like Nikki just said, it's very colorful. Yeah, exactly. So, hi. How are you, baby? I love you. I do. Oh, yes. Such a good boy, aren't you? I know. He's such a good boy. You are. Yes. All right, I'm going to put you down now, okay? Yes? Okay. We're going to put you down because we're going to get started on our blocks. Yes. Yeah, we're going to get going. So, next week... Oh, you know what? I forgot to post the social medias. I apologize. Give me a quick moment. Hopefully, if you're in a class right now, um, getting your stuff together, I totally... Yep. 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 All right. So, select all, copy, continue, publish, and we'll do Tetra. We'll do um, Twitter, and then we'll do Instagram, and then we'll get going. So, go ahead and grab your fabrics. We are going to, there we go, right? Yes, I know, I love you too, baby. I'm getting kisses. And tweets. Yes, yes, I know. He doesn't know that he doesn't get any uh, TRATs on today's stream, though. It's funny because he does not like to give kisses if you ask for them, but he will give kisses when he feels like, feels like it. He loves giving, giving kisses to other dogs. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. Okay, I think we are good. We are good to go. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, everyone has their fabric and their instructions, right? This is the first block where you actually have four pages. So there's four pages. Most of the blocks are only three pages. And the reason why this one is four pages is because there's just so many pieces to do. So many tiny little pieces. So without further ado, let's get going. And that's what it looks like in your bottom left hand corner. Uh, I did rearrange the layout just a little bit just so you could see some of the stuff of what's going on. All right. So first off, let's grab the colors. All right, we need purple. All right, there's purple. We need blue. Okay, that's my blue. My blue's a deep blue. Okay. We need bright green. Mine looks like, yep, it's right here. Now, do I only have the one bright green? Yes. Yes, okay. And then bright blue is that one. Bright blue. Yep. Okay, and then red. Here's my red. Pink. Here it is pink. Oh, this is the first time we've done pink, isn't it? Make sure there's no more pinks hiding anywhere. Nope. Let me put this there. Gray. Okay, so my gray looks like that. Okay, there is gray. I don't think I have any more. <coughs> Thank you for whoever picked up that pattern. There we go. We've got that. 
And remember, if you have not yet picked up that pattern uh, for the Puzzle Tetrads, it is on my website under the Quilt Along. Let's see, we've got that, and then yellow. I believe this is the yellow. Yes. Making sure I don't have any more. Nope, okay. And then that's it. All right, so we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight colors, there we go. All right, so the rest of these colors, I'm just gonna take them and I'm gonna set them aside. Okay. And now we've got those. Let's look at the instructions. Uh, it says, if this block is being made as part of the Retro Gaming Revival quilt, use the following strips from previous blocks. Okay, we need the Alien Parasite. And Hunting Dog, here's Hunting Dog, and Coins. Okay, so we don't need those two. So Alien Parasite. We need the two and a half inch red strip. Okay. There we go. And the two and a half inch purple strip. Make sure I don't have any loose purples. No, okay, fantastic. All right, so that is done. I, I really like this block. This is my, the Metroid one, the um, uh, Alien Parasite that's inspired by Metroid is actually my, my very favorite block. Marin, thank you so much for that host. I appreciate you. All right, now for the coins. We need the bright blue two and a half inch strip. And then the hunting dog, the same thing, the bright blue. It's funny, one of my testers, uh, as I was going through these, um, as I was going through these blocks, uh, one of my testers said, you don't have enough bright blue in the, um, I think it was either hunting dog, there was not bright enough bright blue for something. They assumed that you used the previous block the, the previous strips from beforehand and you didn't just cut new strips like no no no, you cut all new strips that was for one of the previous ones i just thought that was funny since there we go i've got that perfect yeah the only time that you'll use previous strips or combos or things like that is if it actually says it in the instructions okay and i want to remind anyone that's watching on youtube uh, we do have the live chat going on on the upper left hand corner. So as, as if anyone's chatting at all, you can actually see what's going on, that's happening live. Uh, also, you'll see that little pretzel rocks thing. That is a, um, an amazing music service that allows me to play their music here on the stream. The only thing that they ask is that they put the link to if you want to see the artist or download the song yourself. And that's it. So if you're watching and you like what you hear, please feel free to go to those links. All right, so I don't need this anymore. Yes, yes, chat, chat, chat. Hello, Looney, how are you today? All right, so. We've got those. I keep dropping frames. Every now and then, and I don't know why. That's weird. Uh, Nikki, if it, um... <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. Um, wait, I thought I fixed it. I saved it. Did I mess it up? 
Oh well. Oh well. Um, if I drop too many frames, if it starts to lag at all, Nikki, can you let me know? And then I can play with it. It looks like it's stable right now. So we'll see. Because that's also going to affect the video that I put up on YouTube as well. Alright. Puzzle 6. You have reached the block 6. Puzzle Tetrads. I am wonderful, Looney. Thank you very much for asking. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, see, I no, I changed the timer as well. Maybe I just didn't hit save. Oh well. Anyways, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So let's start going down. We're first gonna cut the strips. So purple. Now I do not need the two and a half inch strip because I pulled it from my previous block. So there is that one. So I do need a one and a half inch strip. It would help if I had this right. The person you're trying to reach is not available right now. There we go. Okay. If you need further assistance, enter pound now. Next is blue. You know, I'm just gonna turn all these over. Next is blue. Now, I don't have any previous blue, so I need to cut one of each. Hello, Pixie Firefly. How are you today? I'm going to fast forward through this song. I don't know. I, did, I don't like so, uh, talking like that in the, in the easy listening song sometimes, right? Um... Monday is Mondaying. Oh, yes. Yes, we know how Monday is. Oh, hello. Hi. Did you want to be streamer for a bit? You want to be streamer? Yes. There you go. You can be streamer. Oops. Wrong one. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to need one of each of the blues. And for those of you that, if for some reason, if this is the new, the first video that you watch, if you're only doing the Puzzle Tetrad block, uh, this ruler is the Stripology ruler by Creative Grids. It is my, one of my favorite rulers. And they do not sponsor me. I, they did not give this to me. I paid for it. Um, but it is one of my favorite rulers to cut strips like this. Hey, Sarah Dawn, how are you today? All right, so we need a two. Oh, two and a half. I always forget it's two and a half, and a one and a half. Back up there. Okay, so purple was first, and then blue. Okay, then it's bright green. Yeah, it's been super hot here as well. We've had a, um, a really bad heat wave. As I refused to leave the house. It was ridiculous. But it seems to have broken. I had an appointment this morning, so I actually left the house for the first time in a few days, and it, it's actually nice out there. Let's see, two and a half. It's interesting. I was talking to one of my mods who is in Europe about how hot it was there, and I think she had said Fahrenheit it was about 80 degrees, and I'm like, oh. Oh, that's nice. That is super nice. But apparently it was, it was hot for them. It's normally not that hot. Okay, so just one of each. Yes. There we go. And then bright blue. Oops. You know what? I may not need that one. Let me do the rest of this little one first. All right, so bright blue. I don't need the two and a half because I pulled that one before, but I need two one and a halves. I know, right? It's it's one of those things where I read something over the weekend that said the human body can get used to almost anything. 
And it was in regards to punishment or, or, or horrible living conditions, but it's true for everything. Like, we really could just get used to like all sorts of things. All right, so blue, a two and a half I don't need, but I need two, one and a half. One, two. Okay, that's gonna go there. Okay, and then red. We need one of each. Whoops, I already have this one that I pulled before. So I have that one I pulled before. So now, 23, yeah, I think it is, um, I think outside it's about 22 degrees Celsius. Like, it's really nice. It's really, really nice. Oh, Nikki, will you do me a favor? There is something that I popped in um, mod chat and Discord that I at, I at mods. Um, would you do me a favor? Would you copy that and put that, don't at everyone, but just put that in general chat and that way people throughout the day can give their opinions on it. Thank you. It's for the new Twitch creative card, collector card trading cards. I'm gonna talk about that on Thursday. So for those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you um, if you purchase something from me uh, starting the last week of September uh, for exactly one year, so I will only be giving these out for one year, you will get a temporary collector card. So for those of you two years ago, the last time we did this, um, you also got a collector card. Now that includes anything directly from me. So if a store purchases some things, I will be sending them a collector card for each thing that they send, um, and, or at conventions live. So, but it's something you have to do directly with me to get it. All right, so we've got that. Now, red, we said we had that, so we just need one, one and a half. So, but I'll be talking about that more Thursday when we're not doing the quilt along. And pink. All right, this is the first time I'm using pink, so I need to re-iron it. Oh, look what I did. <sighs> Do I have the chat? Oh, I don't think I put it onto this one. All right, well, that's fine. I'll just switch it to that. That's not a problem. No, pixel, you mean, um, oh, you mean if you use your pixels on something? For example, if you turn your pixels in for a quilt um, or a dice bag or a pillow, something like that. Is that what you mean, Looney? 24 is not bad. That's actually nice. Just waiting for my iron to heat up. Yes, uh, after TwitchCon, because TwitchCon is when I will be launching them at the end of September 2019. Um, so at the end of September 2019 to the end of September 2020, uh, anything that you get that I mail. So if you purchase something from me, either with monies or with pixels, you will get a collector card. And then whatever I have left at the end of one year, I throw away. Like, I don't even remember if I saved any for myself from the last one. There we go. darn hot. Oh, hold on. This has been a, oh, that's right. Okay. So, 33. This is a 
24. Okay. This is a, um, it's actually an end piece that, um, as you can see, there's been some that's cut off. This is not a full piece from Northcott that they sent me. So let me get out all the wrinkles. I think what I may do is fold it in a way because this is not a full yard or even a full half yard. This is, so this piece that they sent me is 33 by 24. So sometimes whenever you get fabric uh, at the store for remnants, you may get odd pieces like this. Um, yeah, it's a remnant that they had. And of course, whenever I ask for a free fabric, they send me what they have. So sometimes they cut me fabric, sometimes they send me remnants. Um, so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do this way. Because this way is the 24 inches. So I'm gonna treat it like it's a fat quarter. A fat quarter is 18 inches by 22 inches. So I'm gonna treat it like it is the, um, the 18, 18 going this way, 22 going this way. So whenever you have a fat quarter and you're doing a project like this, if you're, it's perfectly fine. You can use fat quarters for this, especially if this is a standalone. If this is a standalone block, then you're just doing a quarter yard of all of this. So in order, so we'll be treating this like we used it as a fat quarter. So you always want to fold it the long way. Thank you very much for picking up this pattern, whoever you are. Here you are. So you want to fold it the long way in order to do that. Now, as we fold it the long way, my, because this is a little bit bigger than a fat quarter, a little bit wider, um, my stripology ruler is not long enough in order to cut it. If I had my other one that I left in Maryland by accident, I could do it because it's a longer. It's my stripology square. I could actually do it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to fold it again. So I, I folded this twice. There we go. Now, I'm just picking a line that I'm lining this up on. There we go. Now, for the pink, I need one two and a half and two one and a half. So what that means is I'm going to double what I'm going to cut because I'm assuming this is a fat quarter, right? This is a not a width of fabric that I'm cutting. It's half of that. So I need to double how much I'm cutting. So two and a half, five, six and a half, eight, nine and a half, eleven. There we go. And then the rest of this I'll set aside. So These are already, so if any of the pink needs cut in half, they're already cut in half. And I'm actually gonna set them aside because as you can see, they're just a touch longer than my, um, than my other pieces that are folded in fours. Okay. Next, gray. Oh, it looks like my gray was the same way. Maybe. No, it wasn't. Nope, it was fine. I just had to, I just have to re-iron it. Because is that the new one or is this the new one? Oh, wait, I think this is the new one. Well, for gray, I need two, two and a half. So I already have one cut from my previous one that I did. I cut an extra one by accident. So there's one. Let's iron this one. I'm just over here re-ironing it. Nothing you really need to see too much of. Oh, 
something I discovered this morning. So anyone that is in chat right now or is at a store taking the class, how many of you ever have ironed something and gotten sticky stuff or black residue on your iron? Let's talk about iron care for a second. So, Pixie Firefly and Sarah Dawn and Looney. Did you get it off? Did you get the, um, the, the stuff that was on your iron? Did you actually get it off of there? Or did you just, like, live with it and keep going? Did you try to remove it? All right, so then two one and a half. It did come off. How did you get it off? So if you, if you tried to get it off, what did you try? And how did it come off? Because I discovered something this morning that I don't know if many people have thought of in order to get it off. All right, last but not least, we're at yellow. Is, oh, I don't think I have done my yellow before. Uh-oh, yellow's the same way, yellow's a remnant. Way to find a cool and give it a good scrub of the cloth. Okay, soap and water scrubby, wet cloth. Okay, oh good, so it wasn't really baked on too much then. Because what happens is if you don't immediately get it off and you continue to use your iron, it will burn into the iron plate and then you get it's and then you get the stubborn yuck in there and it's disgusting. So that's what happened to me. I did something to my iron about about I'd say almost a week ago. Okay, so this is 33. By 24. Alright, so by 24. Yes, I do want to go this way. So this is the way that I want to go. So let me iron this. So what I did is apparently I baked it onto there. I really got it in there. And I was having issues. And I actually purchased one of those iron clean pens a few months ago. So I realized this morning what I did, like I didn't even realize I got the stuff on the iron. So this morning I was using the iron clean pen and it was, it was getting off some of it, but not a lot of it. So then I tried soap and water. That didn't work. So then I got the idea how cookie sheets, yes, exactly, exactly, Sarah Dawn. How if you don't get it off right away, it just gets that crustiness on there that doesn't want to go away. So that's what was happening to my iron. So this morning I had this idea, I'm like, huh, I wonder if I, and this is the same thing, we're going to use this as a fat quarter. We're going to pretend this is a fat quarter. <gasps> Ooh, vinegar, baking soda, and dryer sheets. I didn't even think about dryer sheets. Do you know what I used this morning that worked, and I was shocked it worked, is the Mr. Clean Pad. Like, I, I got the Mr. Clean pad, I got it I got it wet, and then I just, and I wiped it off, and it came off. It's the, uh, and this is after I tried the Iron Clean pen, and I tried soap Going and water. Hey, Alley Cat! This is not a drill. The factory is being raided. How are you guys? Alley Cat, thank you so much for bringing your friends over. Especially since I know that uh, Girl November raided you, because I was in Girl November stream lurking. And next thing I knew, I was in your stream lurking, and then I was like, oh, hey, wait, I'm hosting her. Fantastic. For those of you watching on YouTube, or if you're live in a store, if you haven't seen this before, if you're like, what's going on? Uh, Alley Cat Fibers is another streamer here on Twitch. Uh, she has a fiber based stream. Um, she was doing some, um, um, oh, what's it called? Spinning. She was spinning today. Because I, I was I was lurking just a little bit. So she was spinning today, and actually, and were you doing the Tour de France spinning thing that a lot of other people 
and I can't think of, of what it's called off the top of my head. Um, so what she's done is she just finished her stream. She's finished finished streaming, and so she's bringing her friends over here, and she's saying, "Hey, look, let's go with this new person, and we can give them some love." So thank you, spinning for tour de police. That's it, tour de police. So thank you very much for bringing your friends over. Uh, if you do not yet follow um, Alley Cat Fibers, Alley Cat Fiber Arts. Uh, if you are here, if you're watching on YouTube or in a store, if you want to follow her, you can take a look in the chat over there to see how to spell her name. It's twitch.tv slash alleycatfiberarts. Uh, and of course, if you're live now, just click on the link that, uh, that Nikki gave you for a shout out. And you can go ahead and, and follow her now. But she's amazing. I love her. And she's a positive, wonderful person. And I love her. I love her. All right. Is it? So, Alley Cat, you're wearing shorts today on your stream. Is it hot where you are? It's a rest day, technically. Oh, oh, technically it's a rest day, and you guys ignored that? Yes. All right, so we are cutting our fabrics right now. For those of you that just came into the stream, we are cutting fabrics for our sixth block for our quilt along, Puzzle Tetrads. It looks like that in the lower left-hand corner, um, and we're almost done cutting our strips. So this is a remnant fabric, so we're treating it like a fat quarter. So I'm gonna be cutting double the number of strips that I need. Okay, so for yellow, I need one, two and a half, so I'm actually gonna cut two. And then I need one, one and a half, so I'm gonna cut two. And that is how, oh yeah, we were talking about that earlier in the stream. About how it has been ridiculously hot everywhere. And then right whenever you came in, we were talking about cleaning our irons, cleaning our iron plates. I had some nasty residue stuck on mine. And I actually used the um, um, Mr. Clean scrubber this morning and it worked wonderful. Like it got all the stuff off. I couldn't believe it. All right, so here is all the extra fabric. I'm gonna take and set aside. Hello, Miss Hestia, thank you for joining us. Uh, really? I I know. Thank you so much for lurking. I appreciate you, Allie. All right, so now we are done with page number one. So from the one and a half inch strips, cut all strips in half. All right, let's do that first before we do anything. That's my little, my trash pile. See what I'm hiding behind the chat right there is my little trash pile. So we're gonna take all, now these are already cut in half because remember we cut, we made double the number of strips because we treated it like it was, um, like it was a fat quarter. So the only ones we have to cut in half are these. So I'm actually going to open them. Seriously, Mr. Clean, clean Scrubbers clean almost anything. They're amazing. Like I couldn't believe it got um, it got the stuff off my iron. I they have a bath one that I use to clean my shower. I should totally contact them and see if they'd sponsor me. Because I really use Mr. Clean products in a lot of things. All right, so now let's cut these in half. Now that I've opened them up lengthwise, we're gonna cut them in half. So I'm just gonna go one after the other. Come on, get in there. There you are. There we go. All right, so those are in half. So now on to page number two. Page two. Now, considering there's four pages, being on page two is actually a good thing. Okay, so with the two and a half inch strips, let's take this and flip this back over again. So, blue, with the blue fabric. Let's go ahead and cut these. Now remember, whenever you're cutting your strips, all, oh, let me show you what I'm doing. All I'm doing is keeping it folded in half and ironing it. 
Because whenever I cut my pieces from my strips, I want to make sure that I am as, as efficient as possible. So what I do these guys all up there we go is I cut it folded in half so I already have my fabric cut folded in half and I'm going to cut it in pairs of two so for example this first one I need seven two and a half so I'm gonna cut four so that I have eight so one two three four and then I need eight, I need seven, one and a half. So again, I'm gonna cut four, so I have eight. One, two, three, four. Now, I only need seven and seven. So here's my extra. I'm gonna take one piece away from here and one piece away from here. And that's, and I'll put my scrap right there. And then, That's it. Perfect. There we go. We've got the blue. All right, so next we've got purple. Oh, and then I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna set this aside up here out of the way. Just so that whenever I finish the block, I can take all my leftover pieces, put it in the block, and have it ready to go. In case I need it. All right, purple. Now purple, I had a single piece from when I did that before. So I am not gonna use it this square. So that's fine. I am going to re-iron this though, because I always, always, always want to make sure all of your wrinkles and folds are out of your piece strips before you actually cut. This fold doesn't make a difference. Like this is the only fold that you should have in there. All right, I need two. So now just cut the rest of your solid pieces. All right, four and a half, and one and a half. There we go. Okay. And I only need one of those, so I'm gonna take that and set that aside. There we go. Green. And this is all I'm doing for a bit, and it's just cutting your solids. If you are sewing along with me, so if you're actually making this block, whenever I get to the point that all of my pieces are laid out in the actual block and I've got them pinned and ready to sew, that's when we're going to take a quick 15 minute break. So we'll take a stretch break. Hopefully my internet won't go out this week. Yeah, that was fun. Splicing all that together last week for YouTube. For those of you that, um, that are just watching on YouTube and not joining me live, uh, my I actually had a, um, a power outage, a, a quick blip power outage because of heat. And so it turned off my, um, my modem and my computer, and I had to restart everything. So yeah, that was fine. Uh, green, four and a half, two and a half, one, two, and one and a half, there we go. Oh, and we need one of those. pieces from before all sorts of odds and ends okay I don't have any four and a half cut yet so let's do that 
And this is a lonely little pea. We're going to stick that over there because that's a scrap. All right, so I only need one. So I'll set that aside. And then I need two two and a halves. And we have one cut. So let me cut another one. And here's another scrap. So I need that. Okay. And then this is all leftover. There we go. Red. And we're just rolling right along. Oops. And the red, there's my little piece there. Okay, we need two four and a halves. We need three. Now here's the thing, we need three two and a half inch squares. I already have one right there, right? So I already have one left over from before, so I only need to cut two. Okay, and then one, one and a half. Well, we're gonna cut two because I double it up. Okay, so that is a scrap. And that's a scrap. There we go. I think I'm only going to need half of it, so I can set that part aside. All right, so one, four and a half. Let me go ahead and cut this. Let me iron this. There we go. Any questions or anything on cutting fabric so far? Okay, pink, I need one, four and a half. I need four, two and a half. One, two and a half. One, two and a half. And then, <coughs> thank you very much, whoever picked up that pattern. I appreciate you. And that's it. No one and a half. That's right, we cut two. All right, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different with the grays. Cause, because we cut two, two and a half inch strips, we're gonna need a bunch of gray because the gray is the background, right? So I'm actually going to layer. So layering, I have one. Now I took a look at how many of the grays I need and I need four, four and a half, nine, two and a half, and four, one and a half. Well, it just makes sense to cut it by fours and then separate it and then cut that additional two and a half. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's iron both strips. And then we're gonna layer it. So layering is you take one and you just put it right on top of the other, make sure everything lines up. Now it's important that your strip is perfectly straight for this. So I'm actually going to use the lines <coughs> on my mat. Thank you very much for picking up that pattern, whoever you are. So I'm gonna use the lines on my mat in order to make sure it's perfectly straight. And then that way, I can do this. I can lay it and I can cut it by four. All right, let's do this. So, four. Four. Eight. Four. All right, now I just need one more two and a half, so I'm gonna separate it and cut two two and a halves and not four. And just take one of them and set it aside. All right, whoops. I did not cut through in deep enough. Here we go, for my first cut. There 
we are. All right, last but not least, hello, Zarania, how are you today? Now remember my yellow, I was a fat quarter. It was a remnant, I treated like a fat quarter. So in this case, I don't need to cut a lot, so I set one aside. So I'm just cutting it off of this one. So I need two and one. Two, two, but I'm taking this one. My weekend was wonderful, thank you for asking. I take that and set that aside. There we are. All of our solid colors are done. All right, next. We are finished with half of page two. Now, using the one and a half inch strips, now we're gonna start combining strips. Okay, let's do this. We've got blue. Half blue, because they're all cut in half, right? So blue to gray. There we are. Then I need purple to gray. Purple to gray. Bright green to red. colors it's a matter of just finding it all right so green to red bright green to yellow Bright green to yellow. Bright blue to gray. Here's my bright blue. To gray. Like I said, this one seems like it's got a lot of pieces because there's a lot of colors, lots of combinations, but it's not super hard. Bright green to gray, yellow to bright blue. Pink to bright blue. Pink to bright blue. Red, let's see, red to pink. Red to pink, and then pink to gray. There's gray to pink. All right, so we should have four half pieces left over. You should have a purple, a pink, a blue, and a bright blue left over. All right, so now, Let's sew these half pieces together. Okay, Mr. Marley, honey. Honey, I'm gonna have to move you. Oh, he says, well, mommy, I love laying in that chair. I know, baby, I know, I know. Hi, hi, hi. Can I, can I put you down, baby? Is this, is this now Marley petting stream? Yes. This is now a Marley petting stream. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. You're 
such a good boy. All right, I'm gonna put you down now, okay? Oh. <laughs> He's grunting like, oh, please, mama. Please don't put me down. I, I wanna be in your lap. All right, so let's combine these. So we've got there to there. Now, the pink and the yellow are going to be longer because remember, they're not true red, they're not true fat quarters, half the half strips. They are remnant strips, so they're just a touch longer than the rest. Now, in order to sew these, what I'm doing is I'm using a quarter inch piecing foot with guide. So what this means is this piece right here is a quarter is a quarter inch foot and the metal tells me exactly where that quarter inch is. If I'm, while I'm sewing it, if I'm touching that piece of metal, it means that I am sewing a perfect quarter inch. Now, the problem with a perfect quarter inch, whenever you iron it, you have the extra bulk now of the thread. So whenever you iron it open, so let's say if you take a, uh, a one inch piece of fabric and sew it to a one inch piece of fabric, so you got two inches with a quarter inch seam. So that means you're taking away a quarter inch from each one. So instead of two inches, it's now one and a half inches. But if you measure it and you sew a perfect quarter inch, it's gonna be less than the one and a half inches. So what you wanna do whenever it says, something says to sew a quarter inch, you wanna sew what's called a scant quarter inch. Thank you so much for picking up that pattern. You wanna sew a scant quarter inch. So a scant quarter inch is just to the left of this piece of metal. So as I'm sewing it, I actually see a little bit of space and you can actually see it right here. You see that little black space that's between the fabric and the metal? So there's actually a little bit of space between them. I'm not quite touching it. So I'm gonna keep it just to the left of that metal. Now, feet like this are a lot easier to use than just looking at the, at the base of your machine. At least for me. Um, and I know new sewers, it's a lot easier for new sewers as well. There's a couple of things that you can do for your machine. They actually have guides. They have little guides you can put on your machine. You can stick, you can move, you can do all sorts of things. Just to make sure that you're sewing a perfect seam. I, just, I personally like the, uh, the, the foot. <sighs> My stay hydrated bot told me to have some water. So I, just, I took some water. All right. Now, whenever you have two pieces of fabric that you're sewing together, like this, your sewing strips, you don't need pins. You can just put it in there. Uh, you always want to take, if they're not the same exact length, you always want to put the larger, the longer piece on the bottom. This is because as you sew, you're actually stretching that top piece just a little bit. It's not enough that it's going to show. And it's nothing, it's not enough to worry about. But if you have the longer piece on the bottom, by putting the shorter piece on top, you're actually getting the most out of both pieces of fabric that you can. So something to keep in mind. The other thing, as you're sewing strips together, here we go. How I sew them together, you don't need pins, you just kind of stick them in there and sew them, but you want to make sure that these fabrics line up. So how I make sure they line up is I hold it a certain way. So I have my pointer finger in between the two fabrics. I have the rest of my hand underneath and I have my thumb on top. And what that does is as I'm sewing, I can do this. I can move that top piece of fabric back and forth to make sure that it's perfectly lined up. Now I'm gonna do it back here. So you see where I'm holding it? I'm actually holding it I would say about five, six inches away from the actual foot. And you also notice I'm not pushing the fabric in. I'm not pulling the fabric out. 
I'm letting the feed dogs, and these are the feed dogs, so these pieces of metal that are underneath, I'm letting the feed dogs pull the fabric. And I'm just using my hands and my fingers and my nails to move the fabrics to make sure they line up. So any questions on sewing fabrics together? Anything, any questions, anything we've done so far? Seriously, I swear, the more Mondays that we do this, the better you guys are getting and the less questions you're asking. Now, next week is going to be the last quilt along that we're going to be doing from here in my studio for at least a month. So next week we will be doing here in the studio. The week after, so two weeks from today. This is super important if you are doing the quilt along. This is super, super important to remember. The quilt along will not be on Monday. It is the only quilt along day that is not going to be Monday. All right, it's going to be Tuesday because I, so week eight, yes, week eight. So because I will be driving back from Gen Con in two weeks on Monday. So I cannot sew and stream and drive at the same time, unfortunately. So instead of doing the class on Monday, the class will be Tuesday. So week number eight, block eight, it will be Tuesday. Now, for both blocks 8, 9, and 10, I know, right? I should, I should try. I don't know why I can't. For blocks 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, blocks 8, 9, 10, 11. So, four weeks, I will be streaming from Maryland, I will actually be teaching the class live at Tomorrow's Treasures in Maryland. So if you are in the Maryland area and you would like to take the block from me live, it's a free class. Tomorrow's Treasures is offering it for free. You just have to sign up with them, get your fabrics from Tomorrow's Treasures, and then all four weeks you can take the class with me live. And we'll be live streaming it, just the same thing as we're doing it right now. But instead of being here in my home studio, I'll be doing it from Tomorrow's Treasures. Which is a cool quilt shop, by the way. I love that quilt shop. It's a great one. It's a great one. Thank you very much, Nikki. I appreciate that. So if you're in the area and you want to take that class from me live, go ahead and sign up. It is, you do not have to appear on Twitch. If you do not want to be on the stream, you do not have to. Now, if you're going to Tomorrow's Treasures and you do not have a Stripology ruler, I'll have extras with me. So you can actually use my Stripology ruler to cut your fabrics. And then if you want one of your own, you can actually buy one from Tomorrow's Treasures. Hey Ministry, how are you today? It would help if I did right side to right side. That is one thing that I forgot to mention. Whenever you're sewing strips together, you always want to make sure that you're sewing right side to right side. So when you're looking at a piece of fabric, this is the right side of fabric. This is the wrong side of fabric. You see the difference? The right side has the color saturation. The wrong side does not. So when you're sewing strips, you want to sew two the, the strips together, right side to right side. If you are using batiks, so if you have chosen to use batiks, 
There is no right side. Wonderful. Thanks for asking, Ministry. And I agree, summer colds are the worst. There we go. I hate summer colds. They are horrible. <sighs> oh, excuse me, man. Excuse me for yawning. There we are. All right, now we're gonna use our scrap fabric. Oh, I forgot to talk about chaining. I will talk about chaining whenever we are actually sewing the, um, the strips together. All right, so we're going to separate these and we are going to fold them in half Oops, and cut it. So even these little half strips, we want to take it, fold it in half this way. So I'm folding it in half like this and then cutting it in half. Now, remember two weeks ago, I made the mistake of not having enough fabric in order to trim it. So it's important whenever you are lining your fabrics up. So you see how on this side I have a salvage on both sides. So it looks like this side here has the most salvage. <coughs> Thank you very much for picking up that pattern. I appreciate it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually take this end and I'm going to line it up to where that green salvage is. So you see what I've done here? And by doing this, I'm maximizing the most amount of fabric that I can get from my strip before I cut it in half. Yeah, that is the, um, I know the cha-ching noise is quite nice, isn't it? I turned off, so we realized the reason why I wasn't doing that in the previous streams is the link that, um, C Sharp Fritz, a friend of mine who is also a streamer here on Twitch, he streams uh, programming. Uh, he programmed this cool thing on my stream. You can actually see when someone get, picks up something from my website. Whether it's it, you download the pattern for free with the code from a participating website or someone buys something. And it hasn't been working because apparently Shopify, who is my, ho my, my uh, website host, changed their parameters. So he went in last week and he fixed it. Well, I turned it off. I actually hit it so it's not appearing on the screen. The, the big old bright stuff isn't appearing. But apparently the sound still goes off. So it doesn't make a difference that I have, I have quote unquote hidden it. The sound's still going off and that's fine. It's, an, it's a nice chit It means that somebody has cared enough to either buy something or used a code from a participating quilt shop and picked up the pattern. Oh, I should uh, address that. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, after this, the week that this block came out, uh, the way that this quilt along worked is participating quilt stores signed up and they got a code and they could give out the code any which way that they wanted to. They could give it for free on their social media. They could give it out if somebody purchased fabric. They could do whatever they want. It's their code. They could do whatever they want. But that code allows you to download the block each week for free. You don't have to pay for it. So you can, you can just get it for free. And it only is good for the week that that block is active. Um, at the end of all of this, I have been asked many, many times, is this pattern going to be available as a bundle? So all together, the answer is yes. 
Um, I will still sell each individual block for $3 on my website, but you will be able to buy the bundle of all of the blocks together as an entire quilt pattern, uh, probably starting in September, October, uh, online. And then yes, yeah, you can hear Hestia in the background with the dinging. She was playing with her water bowl. Uh, I do not know the paper format that that's going to take yet. Um, if we are going to just print it out, print all the pages out, if we're going to put it into a book, uh, we, we haven't decided yet. So Nicole and I are still figuring out all those little details, but I will let you know when this is finished in October. Mm. Thank you very much for picking up a pattern. I appreciate you. All right. So ignore, ignore. Oh, you know, I should at least fix that little block. There we are. Let's see. I've got... Let's see. There we are. Let me fix this at least. There we go. Okay. Whoops. That's where it is. Oh, I did not hide it from this one. All right, let's see if I hit it from this one. Let's see if it still makes the sound. Okay, even though I do like the cha-ching. All right, we've got this one. All right, so I'm gonna show you ironing. Um, no, oh yeah, yeah, I know, right, monkey? Seriously, seriously. So this is half the strip. So we have, so this is the gray and pink combination strip, right? So what I've done is I've laid it down with the gray side up and the pink side up. And I'm going to iron this. Oops, let's wait for my iron to heat up. I'm going to iron it in opposite directions. So that means I'm going to iron this towards the gray. So I'm going to flip this gray up and iron it that way. And then I'm going to iron this towards the pink. And what that does is it's going to give me seams that alternate in opposite directions. And it's going to give me more opportunity and choice in order to be able to lay it out. All right, there we go. So let's, I mean, let's lock our seam in. There we are. We have half of that. we are and then that's towards the pink and that's all you're doing for ironing oops that's not what I want oops that's not what I want I just can't get the right button man I can see that monkey your cat flipping up the water ball bowl all the time that's funny all right so let's line this up oops that's gonna be on page number three all right so I'm looks like I'm going from the bottom up so pink gray let's cut that two and a half and it said i need to cut two for four total two and a half five there we are so this is extra i'm gonna set that aside that's trash now for these two pieces that i just cut i'm gonna take this flip it and turn it so that this pile my seam is going towards the pink this pile my seam is going towards the gray so you see what I did there so I lined it up and I'll actually show you it again in a second when I well, actually I'll show you now when I lined it up here I laid down my gray and my pink and then I took my gray and my pink and I laid it on top so that the seams were in alternate directions and it was easy to just line up just like that all right so those can go aside let's do this and cut the next one and iron and cut the next one so pink and red Oh, did it, um, did it 
Jet lag for you, monkey. And hi, monkey. How are you today? Fantastic, fantastic. All right, we're gonna lay this on top. Yeah, my internet is not cooperating today and I'm, I'm lagging a bit. Yeah, let's change some of the settings because that's going to affect my download for YouTube as well. It's only a 3% drop rate, but I don't want any drops, right? Hmm. Oops, wrong keyboard. Wrong keyboard! Fan! Oh, that's awesome, monkey. Okay, let's see if that happens now. So I've lowered the bit rate from 1500 to 1000. So let's see. If this helps. Okay, so red and pink. We've got that. Now red and pink, one set. Hello, Jan Bear, how are you? Two and a half, and then one set of one and a half. Yeah, Yawn Bear. Uh, monkey. Were you aware that apparently it's pronounced yon bear? And I have been saying it wrong for years and and Mr. Jan Jan Bear has never corrected me. All right, so separating it. So, this one goes towards the pink, this one goes towards the red, and then I'm separating that. Next So I'm the only one that's been saying it wrong, apparently. Oh, I love the way the pink looks with this blue. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool, the way that those fabrics look together? No, he never told me! Remember, for like the first eight, nine months that he joined me in my stream, he never said anything. It wasn't until Siddick gifted him a sub that he said something. All right, pink and blue. One set of this and one set of this. Yeah, no, it's whenever I... It took me a good four to five hours to pick these fabrics from the Toscana line from, from um, Northcott. It's, I really wanted to make sure that these colors went well together, they blended nice, they went really, really, really good. And so I really wanted to make sure that these colors looked good. Okay. So anyone that's making this quilt have any questions at all with anything that we're doing? See like this yellow. So normally when you pick a yellow, you do like a, a more like a canary yellow. The yellow that I picked is more like a mustard yellow. And the reason is because of how it looks with the other fabrics. So you see how that yellow looks with that blue, how nice that looks? The, um, the canary yellow that they have in the Toscana line didn't look quite as nice. Yeah, it's a great yellow, just not with the rest of these colors. Hey, Star Killer, how are you today? Now, any of my regular Twitch people remember 
We are going to be doing our normal giveaways, but we're going to wait and do them on Thursday night. And this upcoming Thursday is going to be the continuation of what we were doing yesterday. So I'm going to be free motion quilting. You're going to guess how long it takes me to free motion quilt something. And if you guess correctly, you get prizes. Okay, so blue and yellow. One and one. I need to remember to lock in my seams. I always forget that. I am doing fantastic. Thank you very much for asking, Starkiller. There we go. Hi. Do you want back up in your streamer chair? Does Marley want to be a Does Marley want to be a streamer? Mwah. You do, don't you? Mwah. I love you, baby. There you are. Is this what you would like, baby? <laughs> yes. Marley says, "Yes, please, mom." I know you're a good boy, aren't you? You're a good boy. Okay, this is the blue and gray. Again, one and one. Oh, and if you are one of my regular Twitch viewers um, and you belong to my Discord, I have a favor to ask of you. Uh, I have asked Nikki to post something in the general chat. If you can pop into Discord and take a look at it, let me know how you like the wording, if there's anything that should be changed or not. Because it is the wording that's going to be on the back of my new collector card. I cannot wait to talk about these collector cards on Thursday. It's going to be super cool. And Monkey, Jose, and Jan Bear, I also have a section in the mod chat as well. It is. It's a Marley stream. You can exclamation Marley. I know. Uh, you, you, I know. I think it's cute with this camera angle. They can still see your ears popping up. All right, this is yellow and green. One and one. Now, if you're making this as a standalone block and not part of the quilt along, it has the most waste of all of it. Just to let you guys know, it does have a bunch. Now, if you're making this as part of the retro gaming quilt along, you will be using most of this in other blocks. So you don't have to worry about waste too much. There we are, red and green. One and one. Oops, he jumped down. I guess he uh, he did it like no one was bringing him treats accordingly. So he says, nope, I'm done. I'm done. Thanks, Nikki. There we go. 
I've got that. We've got this. I need to get lots of love and attention. Oh, oh, this is what he wanted. He wanted his chest rubbed. <laughs> he, I think he's very happy right now. Hi, Airhawk, how are you? So yes, when I say in my stream you get quilting, sewing, giveaways, free things, and animals, you think you get enough animals? Can I put you down, baby? He says, it's Monday, mommy. That means we don't do the giveaways today and I don't get all my loves. I know, right? I, I don't know. I don't think you can ever have a too many animals. There we are. I will make sure to pet you and love you on a regular basis. Are you happy? Are you happy, Mr. Squinchy Face? You good boy, aren't you? You're a good boy. All right, we've got that. All right, this is blue and gray. No, purple gray. This is purple gray. I almost did the wrong one. And this is the only one that you need two of this. And one of this. So, yeah, so I'm glad I realized that, oh, wait, no, 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 I'm cutting purple, not blue. Because that would not have been good. There we go. Last but not least. And then we can start laying our pieces out. working because I need more more uh, water in it there we go lots of steam perfect 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 okay There we are, this is blue and gray, one and one. All right, we're done with our ruler and we're done with our rotary cutter. So we can set those aside. Now, whenever, and we're done with our scrap, throw that away. Whenever you are sewing and quilting, you always want to make sure that you clean up your area. I always, always clean up my area before I move on. Okay, so here's all of our scraps. We're going to take this. Hmm, where can I put this? I'm going to put this over here out of the way. Beautiful. And let's do a close-up of our mats. So that goes up there as well. All right, so now I need to lay out all my pieces. So what I'm going to be doing that you're not going to be able to see too much is over there, here is my pattern. So I'm going to be starting from the top row and going down line by line. I use a sheet of paper uh, and I actually make sure that I'm laying out the right pieces. 
So you're not, you're not gonna be able to see that. That is off camera. Although, what you are gonna be able to see is laying out these pieces. So what I'm doing now is I'm laying out all of my pieces and I'm gonna lay them out all from here and up here to make sure that I have them within reach, that I can take them. That one. Okay, there's that. Those. Only one, that's two. Lots and lots of little pieces. Yeah, and that's the thing with this, like I was saying at the beginning of the stream for this block, this block has a lot of pieces, like a lot of pieces. still fit over there. So there's all of my pieces all laid out so I can grab them. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start from the top. I'm going to start with row number one. Oh, let's take these, set those aside. Let's put those there. There we go. Okay. I'm going to cheat. I know some of my blocks have horizontal pieces. Let's skip ahead. Do I have any horizontal pieces? <gasps> No! I have no horizontal pieces! That's a win. Alright, so, that's easy. Starting with, block, with row number one. Now, all you're doing is you're looking at the pieces that you cut out, that you've combined, and you're matching it up. So, I'm gonna put row, block, I'm gonna put row number one here and then move it up just so you can see everything. So, we've got that that. Now, when I'm laying my pieces out, I'm going to group them in groups of two. So I have two pieces here combined together. So it's actually like this. Okay. But I'm going to group them up and I'm going to lay them like this because A, it saves room in my, on my cutting mat. I don't have infinite space. I have a very limited space. So it saves room in the cutting mat. But it also already tells me which two pieces I need to pin together to sew together. Okay, so it, it sets me up for success for the future. So I'm making future Tony happy is what I'm doing. Hi. Because sometimes future Tony does not like past Tony. I know. Marley is like, it's time to love me. It's time to love me, mama. Love me. Okay, I gotta lay these pieces out now, baby. All right, so we've got those two. Now, this is the first case of, we have um, two with seams. So whenever I'm laying these seams out, I need to make sure my seams go in opposite directions so I can nest them. So what does that mean? This one, my seam goes down towards the blue. So the next one, the next blue and gray piece, I need to go up towards the gray, okay? Just like that. So then, whenever I sew these pieces together, those seams are in opposite directions. So you see what I've done right here? Thank you for being here, Zarania. I appreciate you and hi, Sokin. So these seams go in opposite directions so that they line up perfectly. So that if I were to do that perfectly, just like that, and sew it just like this, I'm going to get a perfect point every single time. So that's the trick to perfect points. 
is make sure your seams go in opposite directions. Okay, so that's towards the gray. So the next one, I need to go towards the purple, towards the gray, towards the purple, towards the gray, towards the purple, towards the gray, towards the blue, and then a gray piece, just like that. So then now, I'm gonna go ahead and pin these. So I'm gonna pin them as I'm laying them out. So I'm gonna be efficient, okay? I'm gonna be efficient. Yeah, I know, it takes me a while to read my chat. I apologize. Okay, so my arrow is going to the right, okay? My arrow is pointing that way. And because my arrow is pointing that way, that's the way I want the seams to go. So if the arrow points to the right, I want to pick up that right piece, flip it over the left piece, and pin it into place. Because then after I sew it, it's already like this, I'm going to iron it just like this, and my seams are pointing the right direction. Does that make sense? Now, whenever I'm doing pinning, so right over left and pin it into place, I want to pin that seam first. I always want to pin the seams first. So seam comes first, and that's to make sure that I hold that together for my perfect point. And then, you don't have to pin the edges, but I do. It's the seams that's the most important thing. So right over left, and pin it into place. Right over left, and pin it into place. Right over left, and pin it. There we go. And row number one is done. And that's it. That's all you do. All right, row number two. Any questions on anything at all that we have done so far? So cutting, pinning, Marley's cuteness. Anything at all. Marley is adorable. Yes, you are. You are just my adorable baby. I love you. All right, so, oh, row two, here we go. Uh, row two, the very first piece in row two, you have a combined piece already. So, what we want to make sure is that combined piece goes in the direction of the arrow, okay? So, row two, our arrow goes to the left. So, we want to make sure that our gray and light blue, blue piece goes towards the gray. Oh, and look, mine goes towards the light blue. I need to re-iron it. So when you re-iron it, all you do is first iron the wrong side and then flip it over and iron the correct side. There you go. Just like that. And now my piece goes in the right direction. It goes towards the gray. All right, I'm gonna go down here. Gray, light blue, purple, 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 blue, blue, gray. All right, now this way. Seams are going to the left. 
So if they're going to the left, chat, what am I doing? If seams point to the left, which piece am I picking up to flip over the other one? Am I picking up the left piece or if I'm picking up the right piece? So which piece gets flipped over the opposite one? Left over right. So the easy way to remember, if the arrow is pointing to the left, you pick up the left piece. Whichever way that arrow is pointing, that is the piece that you pick up and flip over to the other one. Thank you very much, Nikki. There, oops, oops, there we go. Left over right. Oops, I did that wrong. I put that purple piece all by itself. It's supposed to be like that. I went to flip it and there was nothing to flip. Let's make sure of an even number. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. I just laid it out wrong. The pieces are all right. They were just laid out incorrectly. There we go. There's row two. Next. Now, if you are um, taking this class right now, hi. If you, I'm live at a quilt store and you're taking the class for me, hi. How are you? Uh, we are going to be taking a break about um, as soon as we're done pinning and laying all of this out before we start sewing it. We'll be taking a 15-minute break. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm learning, and I learned the thing, and I am going to edit that out. Unlike the first few weeks where I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to leave it all in. No, no, I'm going to edit that breakout. That way you don't have to worry about it. All right. Next. I've got that. And this. 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 Green and yellow towards the yellow. And then one of these. And this, this, and this. Oh, I forgot to talk about the lonely little pieces. I, I'm learning, I'm learning. See, I'm, I'm getting better at this. Eventually I'll get the YouTubes. All right, I forgot to mention the lonely, li lonely little piece of uh, row number one. Okay, this row goes to the right. So I'm picking up that right piece, flipping it over the left and pinning it into place. So, row number one and row number three have lonely little pieces. There is, I have an odd number of pieces that I am laying out. So that means you have a single piece that you have not pinned or combined with anything else. That is perfectly fine. You're going to get odd number of pieces. You're going to get lonely little pieces now and then. It's okay to be alone. It's okay to be alone and by yourself now and then. You just don't want to be like that all the time. So for this first pass, and every single time I go through and I do a sewing, I call it a pass. For the first pass, you don't have to worry about including it. Now that lonely little piece, it's okay by itself. You just kind of set it right there and you're good. Hey, Poison Ivy, fantastic, congrats. That is awesome. So this lonely little piece is okay by itself. You can just leave that there. We're gonna make sure to include this lonely little piece when we have that next pass. Okay, row number four. All right, blue and pink. How have you been, Poison Ivy? We are in the middle of a quilt along. So we are doing, there we are, that's towards the blue. So the next piece is towards the pink. Um, we are week number six of a 13 week quilt along that we are doing, 12 blocks and then the assembly of everything together. And we're actually teaching the step by step by step and I'm live in a few quilt stores right now taking classes. 
All right, so we've got this. And then of course these videos do go up on YouTube the next day. So if you want to quilt along with us, you can find all the videos on YouTube and all the patterns on my website. All right, now this one, somebody asked me, Tony, this, this next one doesn't make sense because I've got this blue and pink towards the pink. The next is a blue and yellow towards the blue. Okay, so blue, yellow towards the blue. Why, when you have two blue pieces like this, why did I not just make this a horizontal? Why did I not take the blue here and make a pink and yellow horizontal? The reason is, if I did it that way and made a pink and yellow combined piece, it would be the only pink and yellow combined piece in the entire quilt. For efficiency, yes, exactly, Nikki. For efficiency, we did this way. Are you trying to get my attention? <sighs> he just pawed me, like, mommy, give me attention. Mm, we're gonna take a break in a few minutes and then I'll let you outside and I'll give you a TRAT, okay? There we go. All right. So there we are. This goes towards the paint, the blue, and this goes towards the yellow. There we go. And then green. Oh, and then the green. I know, Marley's like, isn't it break time already? Come on! And then yellow and green. Towards the green, towards the yellow. Blue. Blue. And gray. Fantastic. Okay, and then this one, our arrows are pointing towards the left. So we're going to pick up that left piece, flip it over the right piece, and pin it into place. And I'm sorry to hear that, Poison Ivy. Whenever we lose loved ones, it sucks. It is, even if it's expected or unexpected, it doesn't make a difference. It feels like there is a part of your life that is missing. And for some people, it takes them longer to adjust to the new normal than it takes others. So this is left over right and pinning it into place. And that's what it is. It, it really is a new normal because part of your, because your life has changed and it's not going to go back to what it was. Right, Marley? Yes. Mar Marley says, loving me and giving me hugs fixes all things, Mom. You should just, you should love me and hug me forever. Oh, now he's getting down. There we go. Left over right. There we are. That's row number four. All right, let's do row number five. All right, pink and gray towards the pink. Pink. And yellow. Yellow. Green. Green. Blue, blue, and gray. And we're gonna have another lonely little gray all by itself, which is fine. Again, for the first pass, having a lonely little piece by itself, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Cause we're gonna include it the next pass. There we go. 
go. So we the arrow goes to the right. So that means we're picking up that right piece. We're flipping it over that left piece, and then we are pinning it into place. So right over left, and pin. All right, next. To the left. So, this is a pink and gray combined piece. We need to go towards the gray. Why does your rear hurt, Shalette? And then pink. And red. Red. Green. Green. Blue. Blue. And gray. Look at those colors next to each other. Those colors look awesome. All right, so to the left, pick up the left piece, flip it over the right, and pin it into place. Left over right. Because my arrow goes towards the left. And pin it into place. Left over right. Pin it into place. Lonely little piece is fine. We're going to set that right there. Number seven. Now there are nine rows. Okay, gray and pink towards the pink. Pink. Red and pink. Okay, that's towards the pink. We need to go towards the red. 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 Green and red. Towards the red, so we need to go towards the green. Blue. Blue. Gray. Lovely little gray. All right, to the right. So picking up the right piece, flipping it over the left. And Thank you for place. subscribing to Quill Tony. Grab your needles and head down to the sweatshop. <coughs> I, I mean, factory. Happy one year A N N I V E R S R Y. Love you long time. L O L O L O L O L O L O L O L O L O L O O L I am a troll. Thank you very much for that resub. I super appreciate you, Magpie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You like how, because you didn't spell anniversary cor correctly, it spelled it out? Happy anniversary. Thank you very much for being with me an entire year. An entire year. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Magpie. And as you notice, Magpie, you may realize that your sub badge has changed color. You have a new sub badge color. Thank your... you for subscribing to Elita. Grab your needles and head down to the sweatshop. <coughs> I, I mean, factory. Your new badge is now red. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Oh, and hey, hold on a sec. Let's see. I'm going to interrupt our regularly scheduled broadcast to do this. Thank you very much for being with me an entire year. You now have another badge next to you. I appreciate you. Azalita! Miss Azalita. Hi, Azalita. 
Uh, for those of you that don't know who Azalita Lasabia is, Azalita is not only an amazing, fantastic person who has subbed for 13 months in a row, Azalita is my book editor. So she is the one that edited the book that I have out there right now on how to create your own pixel quilts. All right, row number eight. Row number eight. Congratulations, you have just followed Quiltoni. Your taste must be exquisite. Um, anything red, thank you so much for that follow. I super appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed reading through that. And again, thank you very much for, uh, for being my editor. You're amazing, I love you. All right, so we've got this. Any, anything red, welcome to the stream. We hope you stick around. We've got that. We are in the middle of doing a quilt along. If you want information on the quilt along, exclamation quilt along. We are in block number six right now. I'm very happy that you like the quilt that I made you. I appreciate you. All right, to the left. So, left. We're picking up that left piece, flipping it over the right, and pinning it into place. Left over right, pinning it into place. Hello, Hane. How are you? Han. Is it Han Hane or Han? Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate you. There we are. All right. After this, again, left over right and pinning it into place. After this next row, we're doing row number nine. After we do this next row, we are going to take a quick break. Do some stretching, use the restroom, get a snack, all the things, all the things. So if you are taking this class right now from a quilt store, make sure you stretch, or you can just use that time to catch up if you're behind a little bit. We've got that one, and then these two. Now, you may notice this quilt has a lot of leftover pieces. Why do I have a large pink one left over did I forget to set aside did I go to cut one yes I forgot to set it aside all right that shouldn't be there you shouldn't have any solid pieces there Hannah that's it it's been a bit so I forgot Hannah yes I'm calling you Hannah yeah, thank you. So you'll notice you have a bunch of leftover pieces. That is fine. That is natural. You are going to have a whole bunch of leftover pieces. Perfectly fine. Just collect them all, set them aside. You may use them in future blocks. Okay, so to the right, we're going to pick up our right piece, flip it over the left, and then pin that into place. Well, thank you for coming back and being here. I appreciate it. All right, so right over left. And pin it into place. And then lonely little piece. All right, so we have our nine rows all laid out, ready to go, ready to iron. So you know what that means. <sighs> It's time for a Marley cuddle break. We're gonna, we're gonna cuddle with Marley for a minute. I'm gonna use the restroom. I'm gonna get a snack. Are you, are you happy? Is this what you wanted? You wanted a Marley cuddle break? Yes. Yes. I know. I, you're such a good boy. I know you're very good. He says, yeah, I know. Yes, you're a good boy. I know. 
He is. So we're gonna take a few minutes. We're gonna cuddle Marley. Go to the bathroom, get a snack, stretch, do all the things. So go ahead, do the same thing yourself. I'm going to give you some bloopers for 10 to 15 minutes and then we will be back and we will start sewing those blocks and do it. Um, and then if you have any questions on anything with the quilt along, anything I'm doing, feel free to ask. It's not a problem. We'll take care of that. So I'll be back 10 to 15 minutes. Don't go anywhere. You ready to get going? You ready to do some sewing? Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to show you all for right now, just so you can see exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Um, let's move this back a touch. There we are. So you can see all the rows. All right. So, uh, all I'm going to be doing, let's get our, our little fabric thing out there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm reaching back and grabbing my rows in order to do the sewing. I'm going to show you that for a few rows. And then I'm going to teach you the chain sewing that Nikki just put in there. So I'm going to grab this first row. I'm going to bring it forward and I'm going to sew it with a scant quarter inch. Remember back to the beginning of the stream when I talked about scant quarter inches. You don't want to do an actual quarter inch. You want to do just a little bit shy of a quarter inch. And that's going to be better for your block and be better for your piecing. All right, so that's finished. So now I'm going to reach back. I'm going to grab row number eight and bring it forward. I'm going to sew a single piece. Three pieces from the ninth row. And I'm going to move it forward, take those pieces out. Take out my pins. Now remember, I talk about this every week. Do as I say, not as I do. Please do not sew over your pins. It is a horrible, horrible habit that I have developed. Do not sew over your pins. You could damage the machine. You could break your needle and the, pin, uh, the pieces can go at your face. It's not a good habit that I do. But I still do it. And and it's I'm not gonna break myself the habit. Alright, so that being said, that's all I'm doing is I'm taking the rows back here, bringing them forward, sewing them, and then putting them back where they were in order. Okay? Now let's take a look at the close-up. So now what I'm gonna be doing is chaining. Chaining means I have something constantly in the machine at all times. Nikki showed Nikki showed you the actual explanation of that. So something in my machine at all times. So I'm taking this fabric, putting it in the machine. I am not pushing my fabric. I am not pulling my fabric. Chaining does a few things. It saves time. It's more efficient. It saves on materials. It saves you thread. But the most- you have just followed Prototype. Your taste must be exquisite. Uh, exciting light. Thank you so much for your follow. I appreciate you. The most important thing it does, though, is it seals your beginning and ends of your sewn piece. So, for example, let's remove this right here. And I'm going to use my cutting, my cutting gizmo from Gypsy Quilter. I love this thing. This is actually helping me separate my chain pieces. And take my pins out. And then I will show you a close-up. Okay, so... If I were to just start sewing from this area and then stop sewing, I'm going to have a gap of fabric where the thread doesn't actually sew. But in this case, see how that's sealed? And my horrible looking thumb. See how that's sealed? And it's not gapping open. It's completely closed. That is what chaining does for your pieces. So chaining is a good thing. So if you can, chain. Now, if you're quilting, chances are you can probably chain your pieces if you have tons of pieces. I remember whenever I was um, first still learning how to quilt, the first, my thread broke. The first year of learning to quilt, I actually took lessons, not really lessons, but I took classes for like a, a couple of different cool um, quilts at different places. 
and one of the instructors kept trying to explain chain piecing to me. She kept trying to get me to chain, start chaining. And I refused because I had an automatic cutter on my machine. I didn't understand why you would do that because you would just have to cut the pieces apart anyways after. So why wouldn't I just put it in, hit the cut button, take it out, put it in, hit the cut button, take it out. When I finally started listening to her and I finally started doing it, I, I felt dumb. I'm like, yeah, I should have been listening to her the entire time. I do not know why I refused to listen before because chaining is amazing. Amazing. There we go. All right. And reach back. So this is the first pass. Whenever I'm sewing and quilting, I actually, um, every time I go through and I sew all the pieces and all the rows, I call that a pass. And you'll be surprised whenever you get into this and you actually start, if, if you haven't finished already, because I know some people like to be superstars and work ahead, right, Jan Bear? Um, you'll notice that whenever, thank you very much, Exciting Light, I appreciate that. Uh, you'll notice that there, you're not going to have as many passes with the Tetris. So even though there's a lot of work that went into cutting these pieces, into cutting the combined pieces, doing all that, there's a lot of work that went into that. This part is actually pretty easy. Oh, not today. Are, are you not working on the block today while we're doing this? You're trying not to be a rock star. Yes, exactly what Nikki said. This is a teaching stream. So anything I'm ever doing at any point, feel free to ask questions. Um, on Mondays, we are doing our quilt along. So like I was saying, this is block number six. We're doing our quilt along and I am live in a few quilt stores for classes that are actually taking this live. So. We, we limit the questions on Mondays to just quilting and sewing and jokingly talking about Marley. Uh, but any other stream that I do, feel free to ask questions about anything. Uh, this is my business. I do travel around to conventions. I teach, I lecture, I do all the things. So if you have any questions about anything at all, whether it's stream, business related, anything else, feel free to ask in any of the other streams. I am an open book and I do not mind. All right, we've got that. Oh, you're doing, okay, you're doing laundry for the restaurant. That's why you're not doing your block. I'm teasing Jan Bear because um, a few weeks ago for the Mario Coins block, it's seriously, the Mario Coins was the easiest block. Like we finished almost an hour early because that block is so easy. Yeah, Jan Bear finished like 30 minutes before anyone else. Even before me. Oops, thread broke. Somebody the other day in Discord asked for a machine recommendation and asked about this machine. This is a great, inexpensive, cheap, machine and it's good for traveling because it's super lightweight however it is super finicky and has lots of issues and if you are not a sewer if you don't understand how to fix those issues or if you get frustrated by by issues this is not the machine for you oh yeah that's true nikki Jan Bear could have started like super early. 
Like, he could have started before the stream, because I know for a fact, because Jan Bear runs my, um, my Facebook group for the Quilt Along, so I know for a fact that he got the pattern Sunday, because whenever the pattern goes live, he's one of the first people to go in. I swear, I think he stalks my social media on Sundays just to see when the pattern goes live because it tends to be like about 30 minutes after the pattern's live and I see I see Jan Bear's name as purchasing the pattern so you're right he could he could have started on Sunday he could have started like a half hour before the stream started we don't know he may not he may not have started when I did he may have cheated that's true Oh, and you... Oh, there's a bunch of people that I know that stalk my socials. Oh, I have to put more jokes on Twitter. I haven't done that for a few weeks. I've got to remember to do that. I keep forgetting. Who would have the nerve, really? That's what social media is for. Social media... Yeah, you may even finish it on Sunday. Exactly. That's my point. Um, social media is um oh how do nicole and i word that at conventions um not socially accepted um society it's a societal accepted means of stalking <coughs> so social media in all seriousness social media is a societal an approved societal means of stalking so, the, whenever I, um, when I talk to people at conventions and I give them my card, I tell them, and I would like you to, 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 to social, to society, wait, I can't even think of what I'm, my, my brain is not working today. Um, I think it's socially approved methods of stalking. Yes, that's it. That's how I word it. So whenever someone, uh, I take, someone takes my card or I give them, I said, and please, please take a look at, at my, um, societal ways of stalking me. <coughs> Thank you very much for picking up that pattern. Whoever you are, I appreciate you. Yes, exactly, Airhawk, exactly. Oh, yeah, you're not, you're, it's, yes. You're not a stalker, you're a follower, yes. And that's okay. That's okay. I work very, very, very hard in order to try to get more stalker- I mean followers. Yeah, at this point of the block, you are just sewing all of the rows, all the pieces that you've combined together. So this is the point of the stream that we always tend to go off on little tangents. Oh, hey, I'm on the last one. Look at that. See how fast that came, that, that went this time? Because we went off on our little social media tangent. Ministry, you follow my social media. You already do. Okay. Now, all of my 
pieces are sewn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pieces from here. I'm going to bring them over to here. Let's turn my iron on. Oh, I meant to hit all. Sorry, not Matt. I meant to hit all. So I'm going to bring them over here to my iron and I'm going to lay these pieces out. That row number nine only has the two. I thank you, Abby. I appreciate you. See, I'm serious. Exclamation social. Please stalk me in all of the socially accepted forms of stalking. I mean, it's... We've got, let's see, I've got Twitters, Facebooks, Instagrams, YouTubes. Those are the four that I do. Hey, Malfunds, how are you today? All right, come on, stop flashing. Stop the flashing. Let's go. It's funny, this iron heats up super fast. But I get really, really impatient because I'm used to it heating up super, super fast. Oh, I thought you did ministry. Hmm, come on. There we go. Now, remember, all you have to do is iron it up. So, I laid it down exactly how I did it, so I know I've got them ironed in the right direction. Alright, so, now, on row number nine, the arrows go to the right-hand side. Malfunk, thank you very much for gifting that sub to ministry. I appreciate you. Alright, so, seams go to the right. There are three pieces, because, now, normally if there's an odd number of pieces at this, this point, we do something different, and I'll show you. But for today, for this row, there's three pieces. So we're just gonna combine them all together right now. So we're gonna take this middle piece, I'm gonna take this last piece, fold it over just like this. Holy crap, Malfunk, you've gifted 81 gift subs in the channel. 81 gift subs in the channel. And there he goes again. Malfunct. Now it's 82. Thank you so much for gifting that sub to Star... What is it? Star Killer? Yeah, Star Killer. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Malfunct. I appreciate you. Oh, and of course, with that first one, we hit the five subs, so we'll do that extra giveaway Thursday night. So, thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate you. Alright, so, that one is done. It's ready to go. Let's grab row number eight. At this point, I start counting my pieces. So row number eight has four pieces. One, two, three, four. Now, row number eight, seams go to the left. Only supposed to push them once. It's okay. It's okay. Malfunct will get a pass this time. So to the left, I have four pieces. Now, at this point, I'm going to lay them out just to make sure I've got it all correct. And yes, it looks good. So my row number eight, my arrow goes to the left. So I pick up that left piece, flip it over the right. and pin it into place. Malfunct! Thank you for gifting that sub to Kabuki Badger. I appreciate you, thank you very much. Hey, Big Bills, how are you today? All right. Row number eight, left over right, pin it into place. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate you, Malfunk. Thank you. Are you trying to make this a sub only chat? Malfunk, thank you for gifting that sub to Big Bills. I appreciate you. Malfunct. All right, row number seven. Let's iron this. 
Congratulations, you have just followed Quiltoni. Your taste must be exquisite. Sarah, thank you, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate you. Oh, spending your sub gift budget. Thank you. I I appreciate you. Yeah. See, and I wait. What are you up to? How many gift subs? Eighty four now. You realize? In the past, I think it's just been in the past year. In the past year, you have gifted 84 subs to people. You are freaking amazing. Thank you, Malfunct. Oh, that's, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Kabuki, until Dragon Con. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, since the last TwitchCon, so since October. Yeah, so in less than a year. Oh, speak, speaking of Malfunk, make sure if you can be here on Thursday, pop over on Thursday, I'm going to be talking about TwitchCon and the new creative cards. I don't want to be talking about it today because we want to, um, three, four, five, I have five pieces. Oh, look, there's a six. There's a six one. They're even fantastic. All right, this goes to the right. So it seems to the right. Um, I don't want to talk about it today because, of course, this is the Quilt Along stream. So I will save all that stuff for Thursday night. Aw, oh, thanks, Malfun. I appreciate you. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about the Creative Suite. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, speaking of modding for Banzai, are you going to Gen Con? So, arrows to the right. So I pick up that right piece, flip it over the left, and pin it into place. Right, over left, pin it into place. Oh, dang it. Okay. All right. Making, all right. Well, if so, I was going to make sure you knew about our meetup. So, yeah. So, this Thursday, I'm going to be talking about Gen Con, Dragon Con, Twitch Con, um, the collector cards. Oh, Malfunct, make sure Bonsai knows about the collector cards. I'll be talking about them on Thursday. And that makes sense. And that absolutely makes sense, Malfunk. If you can't make it to Gen Con, you can't make it. I know Banzai is going now, though, which is why I asked. All right, this is row number six. I have four pieces. Oh, this is our first one. We have an odd number. One, two, three, four, five. Five. So, row number six, I'm going to the left. So, remember what I said. If you have an odd number of pieces and you have a lonely little piece that you have left in your first pass, you want to make sure to include this lonely little piece. How you do it? You skip the first piece. So instead of leaving the last piece, you're going to skip the first piece. And trust me, it's going to be easier on you whenever you're assembling later. So in this case, arrows are to the left. I'm going to pick up this left piece, flip it over the right piece, and pin it into place. Oh, yeah, no, it is, it is absolutely amazing. So I need to remember to shoot her a message to make sure that she knows if she doesn't know a lot of people there, she knows where all my people are. And then she has all the information on the meetup and stuff like that. But yeah, make sure that she... And you know what? I can even tell her next week about the creative cards. What am I saying? I'm going to see Bonsai Baby next week. There we go. Alright, let's grab these. Same thing. It looks like this has five pieces. And this is row number five to the right. Four, five. Same thing. We want to make
make sure we include this lonely little piece right here. We have to include this lonely little piece. All right, so we're gonna skip this first piece. Arrow goes to the right. So I'm gonna pick up the right piece, flip it over the left and pin it into place. Right over left, pin it into place. Fantastic, thanks Malfunk. Let her know that I will, um, I'll shoot her a message. I'll shoot her a message in Discord. Like I, or, or I'll shoot her a message on Discord or Facebook. Just to coordinate. I'll figure it out. All right, this is row number four. See how easily the, 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 these rows come together? So there are some blocks that are easier or more complicated in some things than others. The puzzle tetrads has the most number of colors. So it's the most work for cutting pieces out. But it's pretty simple for assembling. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fantastic, I have an even number, there is nothing there. So this is to the left. There we go. All right, left piece over right and flip it into place. Flip, flip it into place. Left piece over right and pin it into place. Man, my words have started to not work. Come on, words. What are you doing? Man, stupid words. Words just, yeah. That's okay. They are. Words are super hard all the time especially if you've been streaming for a bit and your words don't want to work it is it's a few simple steps exactly exactly oh i appreciate that minion mama thank you very much thank you very much i try to make it easy i try really 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 hard to make my directions and to make the blocks easy because I want everyone to be able to quilt and sew. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what sex you are. If you want to be able to sew, I want you to sew. So I try to make my, my pattern super easy. All right, this is one, two, three to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, five. Okay, let's take that first piece, set it to scope. I'm gonna lay it out first, but I think I've got five. Aw, thank you very much, Minion Mama. I appreciate you. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I try to do, Malfunk. And every single one of my patterns is exactly the same. So if you are do if, if this is the very first thing you've ever done for my stuff is the quilt along, all my patterns are like this. Every single pattern is exactly the same. All right, so we have five pieces. So we have five pieces. We have a lonely little piece from before, so we leave out the first piece. So right over left because the scene the arrow goes to the right. No, it doesn't. No. You actually don't have to hold anything in your brain at all because my instructions tell you everything. Step by step by step. Yes, lots of us have full brains already. All right, let's grab row number two. Go. 
out. One, two, three, four. And this is to the left. Hey, it's an even number. Fantastic. Two, three, four. And this is to the left, so left over right. And pin into place. Brains are islands full of penguins. You can add a new penguin to the island, but it means another penguin falls off into the water. That depends. That depends. I am actually the kind of person to where I like to make informed decisions. So I like to know everything I can about something before I decide. So I fill my brain full of all sorts of knowledge. I even figured out some simple coding. I actually, on my Shopify website, um, C Sharp Fritz did a, a couple of, uh, of really cool things to my website. But I couldn't figure out, my logo kept appearing in the upper left hand corner and I did not like that. He didn't know how to take it off of there. He couldn't find it in the code. So you know what I did? I Googled it figured it out. I found where the code was. I edited it and it worked. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is to the right. So one, two. Now when I'm laying the pieces out like this, I'm making sure I didn't flip anything or sew anything incorrectly, which I do all the time. Okay. That looks good. And we have six pieces. This is row number one, so the arrows go to the right. So I take the right piece, flip it over the left, and pin it into place. So I would say yes and no. Some people can't learn something new without forgetting something old. But I'm the kind of person where I feel knowledge is important and I wanna fill my brain with as much knowledge as I possibly can. There we go. All right, all of our rows are done. Uh, yeah, it is a cute analogy. I agree. It is very cute. All right, let's do some sewing. So I'm going to skip this first row because remember, this first row already has the, pie the pieces done. See, it's, it's, it's a three on both sides, on both sides. So I'm not going to sew this one. I'm going to skip that one and go right to row number two. No, I, uh, malfunct, yes, I do, but I only do that in person. So the, um, the pixel, the pattern design, pixel design classes, I actually only ever do in person. Uh, I do not do those online and I do not do those, um, I don't make a recorded video of it because I need to make money off of it somehow, right? So yes, I, I actually do teach those classes and I will be teaching actually, um, I have a, a class scheduled at Steve's Sewing Vac in November. I don't have the exact date or times or anything down yet. We're still negotiating the contract. Um, so if you are in the Pennsylvania area, then I, that's, I'm actually teaching a class there. But yes, no, if you have a quilt store or guild and, or a sewing store, if you want me to come out and teach that class, I am more than happy to do so. All right, so let's do this. I've got that. And there. So yes, yeah, I do. What was, I was gonna say something else. And I squirreled. Oh, 
Yes, that's right. I refreshed my stream because I wanted to see after the follows today. I am up to 2,451 follows, by the way. Guys, I'm only 49 follows away from 2,500. I realized that this morning before I started streaming. I'm like, huh. I'm getting pretty close to 2,500, aren't I? I, th I just thought that was cool. There we are. Because there's only a couple, I'm just cutting it. I'm not using my... My thing. My thingy thing thing. It's called the purple thing. It's called the cutting gizmo. It's cool. It's cool. Alright, I've got that. And this one. And there. Fantastic. Thank you for being here and for lurking, Malfunct. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Seriously. All right, so this is pass number two. All I'm doing is sewing all of the combined ones that I've done already. Um, we are just sewing along. Just keep sewing, just keep sewing. Sewing along. Now after this, I believe this is the last regular pass that I have to do. Cause I think ev the most everything has is three pieces. And if and that's the case, I can combine them all and start sewing the rows. Any questions, concerns, anything at all with the quilt along? Anything at all with this block? All right, and let's use our scrap to free our last three pieces. You guys are just that good, aren't you? You are just that good. All right, we've got this. Combining. Aw, thanks, Nikki. Alright, row number two. I have two pieces. I mean, those first two weeks, we got lots of questions. Alright, this is to the left. I mean, seriously, those first two weeks, we got a lot of questions about the quilt along, about the materials, the procedures, like it was great. And now all of a sudden there's no questions. <coughs> hey, whoever you are, thank you very much for picking up that pattern. I appreciate you. Okay, this is one, two, three to the right. Yeah, 
I know. You told me that last week, too. The uh, right piece over left and pin it into place. L left piece over right and pin it into place. I mean, seriously, I do say those words a lot. I say them, like, a super lot, lot, right? One, two, three, four, to the left, and this is a three. Now, whenever you have three pieces, remember you want to use your center piece as your base and flip the left and the right pieces over that center base. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Row five is to the right. We're gonna pick up that lonely little piece that I left here and flip it over. And then we'll take this one and flip it over this way. Okay, row number four. Now, most of these for the Pezzle Tetrads is going to have three pieces. Okay, one, two, three, four. This is to the left. Yep. Just so making sure it looked good. Now, remember what I said about nesting those seams. Make sure that your seams line up the opposite of each other perfectly in there and then pin that into place. So lay. Someone must be walking their dog in front of the house. She, ha she has to let them know that this is her house. They can walk out there, but they better know that she's here. Okay, row number three. And we are almost to my favorite part. don't care. Merle and Alfred are like, eh, she's barking. It's okay. It's, it's nothing new. What's funny is that um, Soleil used to not be a barker at all because I used to live in an apartment by myself before I met my husband. So after my divorce, I actually moved into an apartment building and got Soleil to the left for the two pieces. And so she was raised in an apartment building. So she never barked ever, like quiet. Well, then I moved in with my parents for a few months before I, I married Mike and moved up here because the lease of my apartment was up and I didn't want to sign a whole new lease for a whole year if I was going to be moving up here in a few months. So those few months that I, I was staying with my parents, they are fosters for a Basset Hound rescue. And they have a lot of dogs in that house and they all bark. So she learned how to bark in order to be heard. And I think it's funny because whenever I go to visit them, I bring Marley with me now. I know I said your name. Did I say your name? I bring Marley with me. He hasn't learned how to bark. 
Like, he still doesn't bark even though he's around all those dogs. Is this what you wanted? Yes. It, it's apparently time for Marley Love. Okay. You're a good boy. Go lay down again. So it's to the right. Perfect. Perfect. So, yes, and you hear what she is now. She is a barker, and it's... So, Soleil is almost 12. It seems like the older she gets, the worse she gets with the barking. Alright, that's it! We have all 12 of our rows laid out. 12. I said 12, didn't I? We have all nine. I can count. Really, I can count. Math isn't hard. Words are hard. I can count. We have nine rows. <sighs> oh, Minion Mama, that is funny. One of your Basenjis learned how to hiss. That's awesome. All right, so we have an odd number of rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine rows together. Okay, so I, I'm doing the same exact thing I did when we were combining the actual rows themselves. I'm putting them in groups of two. All right, so I'm gonna sew these two, then those two, then those two, then those two, then that. Got it? Let's do it. Now, when you're sewing rows, and this is my favorite part of assembling quilts and blocks, because now we're gonna start to see the picture come together. So when you're assembling these, this is a three, right? So I have pins on this side and on this side. So I have pins on both sides. I wanna sew one side. Let's get rid of this piece of fabric. And then I wanna sew my other one. Now what I wanna do is I wanna separate these. So I trim that and I'm taking this and I'm turning it around. So you see what I did? I cut it right there and I'm flipping it around. And now I'm gonna sew this side. Now, let me grab the next set. Oh, I need more water. Uh, Abby, I actually address this quite often. All the time. But I've been sewing over my pins for quite, quite a few years. I have broken quite a few needles. Don't sew over your pins. Do as I say. No, no, and I really don't mind repeating myself. Do as I say, not as I do. Do not sew over your pins. You can damage your machine. You can da you can break your needles. Now, I use um, Schmetz Chrome, which is a better quality needle. Uh, they break less. They still have to change them. Change your needles. They, st they, break, they have a less chance of breaking because it's a different kind of needle. They're amazing and I love them. Um, uh, I could still damage the machine, but I use cheap machines. Like, this is a super, super cheap machine you can't get in your local quilt or sewing store because it's a, it's junk. It's not a great machine. It's great until it breaks. It's not going to last long. But it's good for me because I sew six to eight hours a day. All the time. Piecing. This is a pie my piecing machine, and when it breaks... I, I throw it out, I try to fix it with parts. If it doesn't fix, I throw it out, and then I get buy another one. It's cheaper for me to buy a new machine than it is to take this <coughs> to, the, um, um, to my sewing machine repair store. So, seriously, seriously. Uh, thank you very much for picking up that pattern, whoever you are. I appreciate it. All right, so. So to answer your question, yes. I worry about sewing over my pins, but I do it anyways. Because it's a horrible habit that I have developed. Don't do it. Aren't my mods the best, by the way? Guys, let's let's uh, let's actually acknowledge and appreciate Nikki. The entire stream. Anytime I have messaged, I'm, I have messaged. Anytime I have mentioned 
I haven't mentioned anything at all. If I mention my cut, uh, my um, stripology ruler, my rotary cutter, my gloves, no matter what I mention, she's right there with the information, ready to go. Isn't she awesome? Thank you. How are you getting my mailbox? All right, so here's the first, here's rows nine and eight. She's pretty cool, isn't she? It was interesting. I was talking to uh, to somebody last week. I was actually talking to a business uh, about what I do and how I do it on Twitch. And he just couldn't understand how I'm able to do all this. And I'm able to sew and do everything else. And I never touch the computer. Well, I mean, I've got my stream deck. But I don't actually go in and type into it. I actually don't go onto the computer and type things and do things. Instead, I just keep on going and sewing and, and doing my things. So I was trying to explain to him how I have moderators. I'm like, I have people that do that for me. So then I had to explain the whole thing behind a moderator, and yeah. No, it, it, was a, it was a really nice discussion. Really nice, really nice talk. Because this is what I do, right? I try to educate not only the public, but any stores or businesses that are quilt or sewing related about what Twitch is and why it's important and why we want to do it. I mean, look at this. We're doing a worldwide quilt along where we have people in classes, in stores that I'm te that we're teaching. It's the first of its kind and hopefully there will be more. Oh, Soleil has seen another dog. And it's funny, it's not even my husband coming home. I, she has a special bark for that. Yes, exactly, exactly, Nikki. Because, you know, I pay my mods. I pay my mods in pixels. I pay my mods in made up monies. I mean, can't beat that. Uh, oh, big bills. No, it was my girl. It was mine. Don't, don't, don't yell at your dogs. They're my dogs barking. Uh, that's funny that they sound the same though. That's really funny. But hey. Getting paid and made up monies gets them quilts. So Jose, just a week ago, turned his pixels in for a Captain Marvel quilt. Which, by the way, I'm going to try to get it to you when I'm doing this next round of, um, uh, when I'm in the States. We'll see if I can get it to you. If not, it's going to be whenever I get to TwitchCon. So, uh, Jose, are you going to TwitchCon? Alright, so... Now, I'm going to take the combined rows and I'm going to combine them. This is my fun part. This is my fun part. Yes, exactly. Your pixels turn into quilts. Nice, soft quilts. Oh, I've got to update the, um, I've got to actually give you your pixels. Oh, that stinks. Okay. Well, I will, if I don't get it to you this round, I will get it to you by TwitchCon. There we go. All right, so row number nine, row number eight. Hey, Adriel. There you go. So I'm gonna take this bottom row. I'm gonna flip it up over. And there's only one seam that lines up, which is this one right here. So let's put a pin in that seam. 
So it's nested and it's held in place. And then we're gonna go back and pin the rest of the seam. So, chat, why do we make sure that every single one of our seams has a pin in it? Exactly, Nikki! So whenever you're sewing, your seams don't flip. If you're sewing and your seams flip, it's gonna add extra bulk to your quilt top that you don't want. Trust me, you don't want that. There we go. All right, so we've got this one. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to set it all the way over here. All right, so that's my first combined row. Because Clatoni told us to and we listened. Oh yes, positively stitched. Thank you so much for that host. I appreciate you. I like, I like that reason. That's, that's a good reason. How are you positively stitched? rows number seven and six this is to the left this is to the right oh look at that look at how nice that is look at how nice that is i'm doing fantastic thank you very much and thank you for doing that ann reeled i appreciate that taking that bottom piece flipping it up over that top finding where those seams are that nest together let's do this finding where these seams are that nest together and putting pins in them. And then going back and filling it in for the rest. So there we go, that's a nest. That's a nest. All right, guys, don't forget, if you wanna hear about Gen Con, Dragon Con, Twitch Con, all the plans, everything coming up, be at the stream Thursday night. We are also going to be free motion quilting. You're gonna be playing the guessing game, guessing how long it takes me to free motion quilt something, and you could win pixels. All right, let's nest that seam. Oh. There we go. Oh, we've got these two here. And this here. Perfect. This there. And there. And there. There we go. All right. So this is the second combined one. So that goes there. All right. Let's take this. I'm just ironing this over here. I didn't feel like switching the camera angles. Make sure when you iron these pieces, you are keeping the seams going the same direction. That is super, super important because you want these seams to line up. Now, I know my pink is on the left, so I know it's like that. So this is row five. This is row six. This is also where you can see if you really messed something up, like if you flipped pieces or you took pieces out, you left, you can really tell. If these rows are not the same length, you've messed something up. And I still do it. I do it all the time. Ask my mods. Didn't I do it? I didn't do it Thursday because Thursday was the mini quilt giveaway. Which, by the way, if you did not see the mini quilt... Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. If you were not here Thursday night for a mini quilt giveaway, this is the quilt that I made. 
And yes, those are crystals for bling along the glasses. So we do that once a month. I do not know if we're going to be able to do that um, in the month of August. Because I'm going to be in Maryland the entire month of August. But we'll definitely do one in the month of September. So I try to do a monthly mini quilt giveaway. Monthly, obviously. combo to do. There we go. All right. So that goes there. One more combo to do. And then we can start sewing these. We are in the home stretch, everyone. Thank you very much. Whoever picked up that pattern. I appreciate you. So this goes to the left, this goes to the right. Yeah, that looks nice. That looks nice. All right, let's find our seams. Pin them in place. Letting me know that my potion is finished. Yes, I'm playing the new Harry Potter game. If you are playing the new Harry Potter game, make sure you join my Discord. Because we have a section in there on, um, on games. And those of us that are playing have shared our codes. Go in there, add us all, please. Because I am sure, just like with Pokemon, eventually they're going to have something that you can do with your friends. Alright, so. Now, we have an odd number. Because remember, we still have one in our sewing machine. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Now remember, with odd numbers, you don't want to leave the same one out every time. We have one in the machine that we have already left out. So we have to include it. So the reason why I did it this way is I'm working backwards. That one gets combined with this right here. So we're going to take this right here. And let's sew it. Now remember, we are sewing this with a scant, scant quarter inch. Not a full quarter inch, a scant quarter inch. So just shy of a quarter inch. And then now let's do the other side. Wonderful. Now, let's grab the next two sets. So we're grabbing the next two that were over there. Okay? Because these two are going to get combined together. And then let's free this one. Set it aside. I'll take the pins out after I finish doing these. Now you notice my fingers right here. So my, I say, don't pull, don't push your fabric through your machine. Because I sew over my pins, if my needle hits the pin, it could get stuck and it won't move. So what I'm doing is whenever the pin comes close, you'll see my fingers go down and I hold on to it. I'm not pulling the fabric. 
All I'm doing is holding on to it. So if the pin, if the needle hits a pin, I'm right there that I can help bring it through. So it doesn't get stuck and I can keep sewing because we want to keep on sewing, keep on sewing. And I can be more efficient. Because even though I do a horrible thing and sew over my pins, I want to be efficient. There we go. Whew. Oh man, sorry about that yawn. I appreciate I I shouldn't be yawning. Alright, and then so those two are gonna get combined. Now let's free these last two by sewing this piece all by itself. We're gonna leave this in our machine. Set that aside. There we go. All right, let's take these pins out. seams up you can iron them down you can even iron them open if you want it does not make a difference picture is starting to take shape all right so because this top one is a smaller piece we're going to take this top one flip it down and then going to turn it over because that's just easier for me because I know I like to flip the bottom up but I want to make sure that the smaller piece is on the bottom it's just easier it, it's easier for me to figure out better <laughs> all right and then now I'm finding where all my seams are I'm nesting them and I'm pinning them. There we go. And then after I'm nesting those seams, remember I'm going back and I'm finding the other seams that are by themselves and I'm pinning those as well to make sure that none, nothing gets flipped up while I'm sewing. So that's not a good thing. All right, so set this aside. Let's combine these two rows. Remember, it does not make a difference which way you iron these seams. There we go. All right. Look. Look. It's starting to do it. All right. So we're taking the bottom, flipping it up, and pinning it into place. There we are. Now, from here to here, 
There's no nested seams. Oh, no, there's one right here. There we go. But now there's none. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to put pins in all of these seams on the top and the bottom. I'm using my fingers to find seams underneath. Like here's one that's underneath and put a pin in it. And there's another one that's underneath. Hey guys, we're almost done. We are almost done. Let's, let's sew, let's sew. Let's sew all three of these. And then we will combine all three combinations together. Iron it and square up our block. Now, if you quilt, it is super, super important to square your blocks up. I used to not do that. I used to not square my stuff up. I thought, well, what does it matter? I will figure all that out whenever I, uh, I piece, I put the whole thing together. Seriously, it makes your life so much easier and so much better. Just square it up. It's it, like, I thought I was being efficient by not squaring my blocks up. No. It is so much more time figuring out how to get blocks to fit into each other that are not squared up than it is to just take the extra 10 seconds to square it up. It doesn't take much time at all. As you'll see at the end of this stream, whenever I square this block up, you'll see it's not that much time at all. There we go. All right, so let's do the ironing. Let's iron them all. Lay it out and pin it. We are in the home stretch. We are almost done. too like i love the toscana line it is amazing and there's the bottom all right so our block is into three pieces so now same thing we're going to do like we do with the rows i'm going to take this bottom one flip it up And pin it. Oops, I lost the pin. There we go. There we go. We're going to pin this one. here on Twitch. Uh, they're up for 60 days. Or these streams I do put up on YouTube. Alright, so let's... I flipped it over. We're at doing our third piece. And 
And this is it. These are our last two strips that we're sewing. The blocks are that easy. Remember, you can always find the blocks of the quilt along on my website on the quilt along page under patterns or you can also find my regular patterns. All of my patterns are put together exactly the same way. If you have done one, you can do any of them. There we are. Let's sew it. Exactly. If you sign up for my newsletter, which I haven't done one in a few weeks, I really should do it. Then you get a free heart pattern. All right, we're going to use our scrap to free this. To then flip it around on the other side and sew the other side. We are done sewing. We are done sewing. Let's take our pins out. We're going to iron it, take a look at it, and square it up. All right, last chance. Any questions or concerns? Anything at all about this block? Anyone have anything? Turn it around, iron the other one. You guys are just that good, aren't you? Perfect. That's it. We have a block. We have a block. Woohoo! All right. You guys ready to do some, uh, some squaring up? Where is my ruler? There it is. There's my ruler. Got my ruler. Got my rotary cutter. I am ready to go. Thank you so much for following my YouTube. I appreciate it. All right. We've got. 18 and a half by 18, a little more than 18 and a half. Perfect. All right. So we want to square this at 18. If you have a large mat like I do, this is the easiest way to do it. You center it between the zero and the 18. Okay. We have to make sure it's straight though. So what I'm going to do is line up some of these rows and make sure that it's lined up. There we are. That looks straight to me. What do you think? Does that look straight to you? That looks pretty straight. So. I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it along the 18. And 
hand trim. Now, I'm gonna flip this around the other way. And I'm gonna line it up completely along the zero, okay? So this is completely lined up. Same thing. Let's cut it along the 18. Oops. If my ruler was the right way up. all that away. Now, it's squared up that way. Now we have to do it this way. Because remember, squaring it up is 18 by 18. You want to go both ways. Same. Now, this way, we want to line it up. You should have a straight top and a straight bottom. So now, I'm lining them up within the lines. Okay? While I'm doing that, I'm putting it center between the zero and the 18. Now, in this case, for this block, okay, for this block only, you have a larger amount on the, on the bottom and on the right hand side. You do not have to completely center it if you want. You can lopside it in order to take more from the one side, but that's only if you have enough fabric to play with that. Mine, I'm centering, okay? Same thing, turning it around. I was lopsided, Chino. Thank you. There we are. Now that's lined up over there. It's lined up along the bottom. It's lined up on the top. We only have one more cut to make. So along the 18. There we are. Beautiful. Oops. This way. There it is. And there's our block. And if you take a look in the bottom left hand corner, you can see exactly what it was supposed to look like. That's it. Our block is done. So what do you think for the colors, the, um, the shapes? I think I did pretty good with picking those fabrics, don't you? I mean, that looks almost exactly like that photo for the mock-up. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Shalette. So, you know what that means? That means we're done. That means it's stream time. So, I look like the photo. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sheena. So, really quickly, uh, stream, we are... Uh... Thursday night, we are talking about Gen Con, Dragon Con, Twitch Con. If you want to know all the things, please be here Thursday night. Remember, it's also a free motion quilt stream, which means we play the game. How long does it take Tony to quilt a quilt? You could win prizes. It's a lot of fun. Be here Thursday night. Friday, uh, it's going to be a Friday afternoon stream. We are going to be binding those quilts that we quilt Thursday night. And then Sunday morning, we may be finishing up our binding. I may be piddling around. I don't know what I'm doing Thursday morning. I may even play some games. Because next Monday is our last Quilt Along stream here from the studio. Because a week from tomorrow, I'm leaving for Gen Con. It's going to be fun. So, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for, uh, for everything. I appreciate you guys. You guys know I appreciate the... No, never panicking, Nikki. Never. Um, I appreciate the follows, I appreciate the subs, I appreciate the raids, we'll be doing all those giveaways on Thursday night. Most importantly, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. So, I'm gonna go raid somebody, please stick around, let's go give someone some love, and I will see you Thursday night. I love you guys, thank you very much, I appreciate it.